Right here at St. Mark's, we're small but mighty today, but all the same, we're here to uh, raise our Lord Jesus up high. So let's do that. I'd like to invite you to stand and join us in song this morning.
this place this morning. Lord, we are excited to sing your praise. God, to come and seek you and learn about you, God. Be moving through us, through our hearts, and open up our eyes to what it is you want us to see this morning. We love you so much, Lord, and we thank you for calling us here. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You can ask. Good morning. Add my welcome to worship this morning, whether you're sitting with us in the sanctuary or at home with your family. We're glad that you are with us this morning. As we gather, I would encourage you to take a look at the blue page on your bulletin. Um, we're getting ready to gear up for fall. Lots of new things happening. Next Sunday is our fall celebration and kickoff. Uh, you'll notice out in the gathering space there are some tables with information about ministries and other things you might want to take a look at. Also, there are people with things on their name tag, like Lydia. Lydia, what's on your name tag? Asking about the welcome team, asking about small groups and study. Yes, so there are ways that you can learn more about the ministries that are ongoing here at St. Mark's by having conversations with people like Lydia and others who have participated in these ministries. Um, want to remind you, um, we do ask that as you are in the hallways that you keep your masks on. Uh, some of you are remaining your, with your masks on in here, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, we want you to be safe and uh, be welcome in this space. And speaking of welcome, if you'd like to register your attendance, there are actually blue books out. Uh, but if you're not comfortable with that, um, I think there are some QR codes in your... Do you see QR codes in front of you? Yes. I think you can do both attendance and giving with those QR codes. We're getting so fancy here, we don't know how to take it all in. Uh, so um, I had to have one of my kids teach me about QR codes, so just saying. Um, if you don't know, we can help you. Um, take a look then as well at the blue page for the events that are coming up. There is a picnic this week at Worship Wednesdays out on the lawn. Um, there's a blood drive coming up in September. IHN is going to be here, all ways to serve and to grow in this place. Again, we welcome you and invite you. If um, you are looking at the, I just forgot. You know what I didn't bring with me? Um, our giving for August. So this is on the fly. Just saying, just saying. Um, it is the United Methodist Committee on Relief, and you can see the note about that in your bulletin. It's there about the work that the United Methodist Committee on Relief does. I think you can be pretty sure that the United Methodist Committee on Relief is working right now uh, with the victims of the earthquake in, that happened near Haiti this week. So take a look at that. Your giving can be done online. You can put it in the basket at the back of the sanctuary. For all of these things, we are grateful. And again, we welcome you to worship this morning. All right, let's, let's stand and continue to sing. Throughout my history, your faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storms made way for spring. In every season, from where I'm standing, I see the evidence of. Oh, 
Good morning again. It's good to be with you this morning. 
I chose for the text this morning Psalm 111, and in just a few minutes we're going to read that together uh, responsively. But first I'd like to remind you of a couple of things. For most of us, we spend our week thinking about how we're going to get through things, right? How am I going to get this done? What about this? Do I have enough? Have I been enough? And that carries over to Sundays sometimes, doesn't it? Sometimes we've been taught that when we come to worship, the point of worship is us. So we bring all those things that we've done throughout the week, and sometimes we come looking for an answer. Sometimes we come looking for a way to move forward. But I just want us to think this morning that maybe what we do on Sunday morning is really important to put our eyes and our hearts focused on God, the worship of God, and to be reminded how God is with us. So if we can get on the screen, I know we don't do a lot of responsiveness in this service, but I wanted to invite you to read with me the text from Psalm 111. If you'd like to use your hymnal, it's in page 832. So we're going to do it this way. There's a lighter print and then there's a darker print. I'm going to read the lighter print and invite you to read the darker print. Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who have pleasure in them. Full of honor and majesty are the works of the Lord, whose righteousness endures forever, who has caused his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord provides food for the faithful, and is ever mindful of his covenant. The Lord has shown his people the power of his works by giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of the Lord are faithful and just. The precepts of the Lord are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. The Lord sent redemption to his people and has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and wondrous is God's name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have good understanding. The praise of the Lord endures forever. Let us pray. Holy God, we come into your presence this morning wanting to experience you, your goodness, your mercy, your faithfulness. So open our hearts to hear what it is you would say to us today. Amen. Well, it's not easy uh, to think that in worship we should put aside ourselves and focus on God. Most all of the messages we get from our culture today are, you are the most important thing. And if you have a problem, here are the six ways to fix it. There are even ways to fix baldness. I laugh, but I shouldn't. (laughs) There are ways to fix all of those things about us 
that we don't like. But when we come to worship, God is the focus. That's why this psalm is so important for us. I'm not going to give you any assignments this week. I'm not going to go say, do this, serve the poor, do this, be faithful. Our assignment this morning is to worship God. Listen again to this text. The works of the Lord. The works of the Lord. Mountains, the sparrows, the waves that crash. I went to the state fair yesterday with my daughter. Elephant ears. <laughs> Percherons. Clydesdales. Ducks popping out of their shells, being born right in front of us. The works of the Lord are great. God's deeds are majestic and glorious. Imagine, imagine this world that God has given us. How can you walk out on a glorious Sunday morning, see the sun coming up, listen to the birds singing, and not believe that God is worthy of our worship? The creation is constantly telling us of God's goodness, of God's mercy and compassion. We're reminded every day, at least I am, of the ways I have not done my best, the ways I have failed. And yet every day, I am given mercy to begin again. Goodness and mercy. When I was a child, um, I lived on a farm. I grew up on a farm, played in the dirt, did all those things. But mostly what I remember about childhood are those wonderful adventures my mother would take us on with food. Um, my dad was a farmer, and he farmed with his brother. And um, they had a piece of property that was about four or five miles away from where we lived. And um, in those busy times of the seasons when um, you would plant seeds and then when you would harvest the crop, they were at a different place some days. And I don't know what you know about the old days on the farm, uh, <laughs> but in the old days, I remember when the men came in for dinner not lunch, dinner, midday, there was a fabulous meal on the table. Often two kinds of meats, a couple of salads. There was always mashed potatoes and gravy. That's how, we, that's how we did it in those days. Vegetables, a couple of different kinds of pie, maybe even a cake. And they'd eat until they were full, and then they'd go sit down under a tree and take a nap for 30 minutes before heading out. Well, when they were down at the place that was four or five miles from our house, you know what my mother did? She packed all that food up in containers that kept it warm or cold. I'm sure I've told you this story before because it always amazes me packed the trunk of this old Pontiac sedan, which was very large, let me just say. Card tables, a couple folding chairs. There were coolers with iced tea and one with water. There was another one that had hot soapy water because there was no hot soapy water in this farm that they were working at and one with clean water so they could get the soap off. And we had a 
feast in the middle of the cornfield right there in the middle of the planting or the harvesting God is good we taste the goodness of God in our lives God remembers the covenant we don't have to remind God God remembers God sticks with us forever God came to us in creation. God came to the people of Israel in leading them out of their slavery into freedom. We don't have to remind God about a covenant. God reminds us. God is trustworthy, the psalmist tells us. Trustworthy and faithful and in the midst of all of those things that we experience in our lives, God is there. Because what I experience is that there always aren't good ways to figure out what is next. Sometimes we are just puzzled and don't know, but God is there. We see God with us. God's covenant is forever. Holy and awesome is God's name. And so to know the truth is to know God. God's character is to always be with us. And so what do we hope for in worship? We hope to get a glimpse of that goodness of God every time we come into this room. A glimpse of what God is doing in the world. And then maybe to become a part of that good that God is doing. I hope that as you move into the week ahead, you will use your eyes and your ears, your nose, your taste, to understand the ways in which God is working in and through the world, and that means in and through us, to bring hope and salvation to the people. One of my favorite prayers in uh, the book of worship is in uh, the morning, the order for morning praise and worship. And the first line of that prayer is, new every morning is your love, great God of light, and all day long you are working for good in the world. So may it be for us. Amen. I'd like to invite you again to stand as you are able and join us for one last song this morning. Thank you.
this day to see, to see the goodness of God in all that is around you. Go in peace. Amen.
mighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only.